Yeah. Okay, this is what we're talking about today, is the in-needle selection activating cam. This is for a customer who asked me to make this video. She's going to change hers. What's happened to hers is where there should be a slot, one side of it has broken out. So there's not really anything for the screwdriver to lever against to go from the in needle selection position to the non selection position and this normally lives right underneath here now this is not something that i recommend that you necessarily do unless you are really good with your tools there's springs that are going to jump out at you when you take this foot off and you must remove this rear foot and this is a case where if it's not broken you leave it alone but this person wants to try it, says she has some help. So we're going to make this video to show her how to change this piece right here. And for everybody else, it's just pretty much the same kind of thrill that a horror movie produces. Yeah. I mean, it's just something to look at. All right. <clears throat> Knitting friend has asked us about this end needle selection cam. This is what you normally see. The little pink slider with the black slotted screw that isn't a screw. This is where the first of the situation comes in. And if you'll notice, what I've had to do is take the whole rear foot off of this machine to get to this. Now, you said we normally see it. I don't ever remember seeing it. That's buried in a hole as far as I know. Well, this is what you see is this little black spot and this pink slider. Okay, right. I've never seen the pink. Right. Well, this is this is it. <clears throat> but let me put this back down because here is the part that the friend is actually asking us about. This is the cam that moves this. So that is the part that we're talking about. And this is where it lives is in here. And you normally see it from this side and you just see the slotted screw portion. Now I can't see you. You got to lower your hands okay. so anybody can. There we go. All right. Now it goes in a certain way. There's an angular side to that stop, and it goes along. The, oops! It is really slick and clean now. This one's been deep soaked, but there it is in place, and it rotates this way, and pushes this out, and it rotates that way. Now, here's one reason I don't think this is a DIY, because... As I recall, that foot is quite a job. It is, and there's a, it's attached through. But now, see, I'm going to lay this little tiny spring right there. That spring goes in this slot, and it is the biggest sproin factor ever. <laughs> I remember hearing you searching and searching this mm, all over the floor but it must be loaded into its spot and I'll show you there's a little teeny stop right there that the spring in sits on and it goes into that little circular area and you can see that right there there's the stop that the spring sits on. But the spring is compressed when it's in its usable position. Now we're going to put the spring back on the magnet, which is how I hang on to them. And let me show you some of the miserably parts of this. You notice these two little flippers. No, you're, you're okay. moving out of where I okay. can get to. You notice these two little flippers, one here and one there and they go through the bed when this is in place now, no not through the bed I don't through think. the carriage yeah see this little cross piece here and this is actually the underside stop for this actuator and there's one on both sides that little teeny piece goes right in here can you get that on the camera each one has a little white post and it goes in there and so it's got a tuck under but notice these you'll see from the top side of the carriage and i'm going to very with the cover off but 
Yeah, with the cover off, you'll see them in these two areas right here mm -hmm. and right there. So here's the maneuverable trick here is to get these two started in yeah, up, these upside two, down. What? This cross piece and that cross piece right there. Okay. We um, Listeners, we didn't see him on the right side. So point to the right side again. This, here we go. And then I'll bring this over, and there's one on the other side. Okay. All right, now this is in position, but the end of your stitch size selector will go under it. And you see, I just moved that one. It normally stops against this metal plate. So it's going to try and slip under the edge of it every time it comes up. And so you've got to get it out of the way to put this back into position. I'm going to take it up one more time. Go ahead and stop. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way, and you notice it just sits there. This is what the little pink guy pushes. This is what slides, but now this is what I want to show you. This piece is spring-loaded. Of course, this is what goes into your timing belt when you're using the patterning position on the carriage. But this piece rides up. You can see me pushing it down. You can see my probe goes under it. This will slide right under it. Is it supposed to? No, it's supposed to butt into it just ah, like that. Ah, so you must stop it. This is held down by the foot. Now on this side, if you can come over here, it's behaving itself. This one doesn't want to ride up as badly. But it will want to ride up, especially if it's all nice and clean, which if you're going to take it down this far, you should clean it. Yeah, why go to this much trouble exactly. and do half-step it? Right. Now... So what that means is when you put the foot back on, in order to get the foot pushed down, you're going to have to pull this up and push down once it's in position so that it pushes this piece against the flat of the carriage. So you've got these that must be fed. Wait, wait, we can okay. see you. You were out of the frame. Okay. We've got these, one on either side, that must be fed down into this slot. And stay right where you're at. Multiple things have to happen at once. At one time with your other, other hand. Now that piece that I just showed you right there, when it comes through the carriage, it goes under this spring. This spring actually straddles it, and that's what holds it into position. On this side, you can see it, and you must unhook it. It goes under that black piece not over the top. You see, it'll want to ride well, it up. It can get over the top, but it right. should not. Right, it should not. Now, on this side, you can at least see it, and you'll know, because I'm telling you to take it off before you remove the foot. But come over on this side. Oh, my word. Where is it? It's Ooh, underneath here. Mysterious. And you do not want to have to take this slide off, because this has got six different things that must be aligned. But now watch. Here's my probe. Oops. See it uh, peek out of there? We sure did. All right. What it is, is I'll show you on the other side. You can see the end of it right there. And when you push on that end, it comes out. It's in the same spot over here, but it's very hard to spot. And again, it has to go under that, not over that. Okay. So With the, that was blocked by your hand. This little black piece right here. Okay. Just like we showed you on this side, it goes under this black piece, which is held down by that spring. And you have to do the same thing over here, but that little guy's going to disappear the minute it's off of its mount. And the mount is that piece. This is the foot as it would sit on the back side of the carriage. And this is the piece that goes inside of this loop. You're ready. Okay. This piece also has to come off. I'm going to put it back where it belongs. And if you'll notice, it's got a post that it goes down on. And then this very, very long screw goes down in there. 
And the reason you have to take that off is to get that cross piece that we talked about out from under it. 